Good afternoon to those who have joined. Um, let's continue with PSM 150X with topic six, topic six, to topic seven, sorry. Right, I was just called a topic six over here. Um, what I want to say, today's agenda is we'll just be uh, doing a problem on um, basically the, the tangential uh, velocities, um, angular velocity, acceleration, and distance um, in relation to angular motion. And then obviously, and after that, you'll be discussing something called the centripetal acceleration, or rather the, the, the acceleration responsible for mm -hmm. a body rotating which obviously I'll try to explain and then you'll do a, a, a small example and then we will continue tomorrow on campus as per normal. Okay, so just a quick recap on um, on what we discussed last week is basically I've shown you relationships between angular velocity and linear velocity. Sometimes they call this ten tangential um, because the velocity is a tangent on the on the circle but just as an illustration again um, for instance we can obviously imagine a car and we can imagine a wheel on a car over there and as the car is rotating um, at the same time the wheel is moving forward and that velocity that is moving forward is essentially the tangential velocity or the linear velocity of the wheel which um obviously the oh sorry it's just my cables a bit fault here so i'm do that quickly let's turn it here working okay so we know that i think it's still not working okay just give me a second Second, sure. Let's see now. Right. Just don't see my tablet's not picking up for some reason. Just give me a minute. Okay, sorry about that guys, just checking now again, doesn't seem like it's operating yet for some reason. 
just have to close up here.
All right, guys, can you hear me? Sorry about that. Um, I'm not sure exactly what happened there. Am I audible again? I see I'm Tanda and Malusi. Can you guys hear me? Cool. So just moving on. And although the the wheel possesses angular velocity, it has um, a tangential or linear component, which is obviously this guy over here, right? Which is defined as velocity equals radius times ag angular acceleration. Um, with this, obviously, I will show you how that was derived. And that was, we have another relationship between the, the distance as well, which is essentially the arc, um, or the circumf circumference on, on the wheel, depending on the angle. And obviously, we have a relationship between the radius and, the, and its angular acceleration component as well. So what we'll be doing in today's example, or our exercise, is basically practicing those elements over here. Okay, with a very practical type question. I hope that's clear to everyone. So that's the, the basic revision, and then after this, we'll move on to the next section. So without further ado, let me um, read the, the question. So one end of a light inelastic rope is fixed to a certain lift, and on the other end is wound, and the overhead winding drum is 600 millimeters in diameter. The drum is now uniformly accelerated from three radians per second to 11 radians per second during four seconds. Okay, so that doesn't sound like much, but it's essentially what we have there is that we have a drum. I'll zoom in a bit for you over there. Um, and the drum is wound by a rope, they say it's an elastic rope, but obviously we can do this as an overhead crane or hoist, um, and that's what's essentially happening. What's happening in this case, obviously, it's essentially lifting something, or this is a lift, maybe one can view as well, and um, we are looking at certain particulars. What's nice about the question there um, is that obviously they give you the angular velocities in radians per second already. So typically, I always, I always give it in RPM because that's what you typically measure in, and you obviously have to convert into rads per second. Okay, so. Yes, so let's start with A. So A asks you ask for the angular acceleration of the drum and the linear acceleration of the lift. Anyone, what would be the approach taken here to solve for at least the angular acceleration of the drum? Right? How much is the drum accelerating by? Now leave it open. Sipokushe, Penny, Lulufefe, Malusi. What formula do we use? Um, Zandile, Tefo, Joseph, how would we find the angular acceleration of the drum? Anyone? Yes, thank you, Lulufefe. Fantastic, right? So we go with WF equals WI plus alpha T. Okay, if you're doing this, you're definitely on the right track. So in this case, our final is 11. Our initial is 3. We are looking for alpha, and we have the time, and that's going to be in 4 seconds. So can I ask you guys, what is alpha? which is the angular velocity in radians per second.
I'll just wait for the answer. So this is for Wi-Fi, two radians per second squared. It's fantastic. Right. That's done and dusted. Okay. And so the next question is, how would we find the linear acceleration of the lift? Right. So we have to look at our formulas, um, which will tell you the linear um, counterpart to the angular one. So what is it? Just tell me the formula first. Well, Daniel Lefefe and Ms. Mbunu. This is what I expect. So what's that formula for the relation between angular and linear acceleration or tangential acceleration? So guys, you recall this formula, A equals R times alpha, and we needed a, the radius of the drum. In this case, it's going to be 300, which is half the diameter, which is 0 0.3. And we multiply that by 2, then we should get 0 0.6 meters per second squared. All right. Is that clear to everyone? Is there any questions with that? Right for part A. Fantastic. Okay, thanks. Your like I says is sorted. Anyone else? This is okay. Joseph, is it all clear, guys? So where do you get 0 0.3? So like I said to you, it's the radius of the drum, right? It's given over here. And this question was posted on Blackboard, if you are interested. Is that clear to everyone? Right, so let me move on. So the next part, 
to ask us the number of revolutions made by the drum during the four seconds. So I don't know how much it has rotated. Obviously, we've done a few of these problems. And um, what formula in the angular motion or rotational motion formula do you think we should use now? How would we find the number of revolutions of the drum? I'll leave it up to you. So it's great if you're interacting, you're actually practicing for the tests and exams. I always highly recommend you, um, you do this with me. It's only for your benefit. So yeah, it's a very good question. It incorporates all the things within angular velocity, the motion part anyway. Okay, so which formula do we use? Which formula do you use, guys? I mean, that's a clear. Which one? You can unmute your mic. Thank you, Malusi. Go for it, Chief. Oh, uh, sir. I think um, you, use, you are supposed to use a formula, um, one that says um, WF squared is equal to V initial squared plus 2A delta um, theta. Beautiful, brother. Beautiful. That is what I want to hear. Thank you very much. Thank you, Malusi. So this is the one we're going to use. Like I said, I love this question. Um, incorporates everything. So we now find the velocity is 11 squared over here. We've got that as, um, what's it, kind of three, um, two. We've just worked at alpha, so that's another two. And our only unknown is delta theta, which we'll get in radians, right? So let's get that guy in radians first before we embark, before we move forward. Let's get that guy. Thank you very much. So that's 28 radians. And um, if you recall, um, if you, to get arms revolutions, we have to say 28, divide that by two pi, I believe. And um, that'll give us the, the amount of revolutions. Let's see if you correct. And that's 28 divided by two pi. And um, you should get a value of 4.456. All right, fantastic. So it rotated around four and a half times. Okay, I have 29.5. No, for sure, it's definitely 28. I'm not sure what you've done, um, this is okay. Okay, everyone content to that one. You just can do C. And I'll ask you now, so they want the speed and the increase in height of the lift. So what they're actually talking about is this over here. 
um, just going to call that the love part. So the, the linear part of, because remember, as it's rotating, it's there's also a, a linear uh, motion happening. In this case, it's on the left. So how do you think we would calculate the speed and the increase in height of the left in the four seconds? Who has any idea? Now what can we use to relate linear and angular uh, motion? I mean, Lucy can obviously, um, you can um, call us, tell us which formulas to use, which equations do we use? Fantastic. I've got wonderful students here. We, we can use V equals um, V equals omega R. And this will tell us in, in this direction. So remember, if you look at it like this, I'm not sure why this is lagging. We have the, which speed do you think we should use as well? Um, so like I said to you, the loves of the year and over there, the left will be either being raised, obviously that's the linear velocity they're talking about. Um, so they want the speed. So which speed do you think we'll use at the end of the four seconds? So obviously we want this is the, the angular velocity after four seconds, right? So what angular velocity is that? So that should be 11. Try to take your time to think about it there. That'll be 11 times um, the radius is 0 0.3. And if you get an answer of 3.3 meters per second, and what this means is that the loft is traveling at 3.3 meters per second. And if you want to look at the increase in height, so obviously it lifted it from one point, from one point to another. Let's assume it's this point here going up till there and what formula do you think we should use now what's the linear formula for the motion Singalaka. What's the formula for the increase in height? What think what do you think we should use?
Well, no, that's not correct, Penny. Remember, we are relating angular velocity to linear ones, right? But I mean, that's a fairly good guess, but I mean, could we possibly use it? Um, and remember, we're looking at the increase in height. So, remember what I said to you, there's this formula, which looks at the linear part. If someone just posted now, I just miss it. Radius, there we go. Singalaka is on the ball. Don't know what coffee or tea is Singalaka is drinking, but that's the one you should. And um, we essentially take the radius, which is 0 0.3. And we times it by the respective angular displacement, which is 28, right? And so if we do that, you should get 8.4 meters. Remember what I explained to you what this formula was? It's calculating essentially the length around the circle. And obviously, as it rotates once, this for instance starts over here, it's one revolution, the thing will move a particular distance, it moves again, goes up again, goes again on the third evolution, it goes up again, then obviously on the fourth one, it goes further up again. Just as an illustration to what's happening. Okay, it's the equation. Yes, Malusi? Oh, sorry, sir, please can I ask you, where did you get that zero comma three, sir? It's the radius, guys, of the, remember, it's the radius of the a winding gun. There's a moon with all those questions over there. Are you sorted? Oh, yes. Sir. Yeah. So that's a, if you look at that, the 0 0.3, we use the acceleration, we use it over here as well, the velocity, and we use it here, the distance. Is it all clear to everyone? Is Did I explain it well? Is there any questions before we move on to the next topic or section, subtopic rather? Guys, please ask questions. We won't become. We will not. We will not be returning to this. Nani, Colin, Joseph, Lawrence, Livone. Any questions, guys? So, if you have no questions, just give me a thumbs up, and then we can move on to central petal acceleration. Thank you. Fantastic. Benny says, please repeat why we use that formula. Uh, the force is kind of confusing. Which four are you? The force, the force. I don't know what you, I'm not sure what you're asking. Just wait, I'm just going to address Penny's question, then we can move on. Penny? Been saying something. Yes, my Lucy. Um, I'm sorry, sir. please can I ask again. Um, isn't it supposed to be like zero comma six uh, diameters? 
Um, I'm going to see what does the formula ask for. Well, well, we need the radius, chief. Oh, we, we, and you're aware that the radius is the diameter is a full distance, right? And the radius is from the center to the one side. Are you sorted, Malusi? Oh, okay, it's okay, it's okay. So, uh, I'm sorted, I'm sorted. Okay, great stuff. Okay, let's move on. Okay, so let's move on. Now the question, guys, before we close off this, very important question. It involves nicely the angular and linear parts. I'm just gonna open my slides quickly. You know, there we can move on. Okay, so we're good. So let me move on. So now the next part is called um, the centripetal force, right? Um, I just want to ask you a few questions here. Um, right, so I've, I've, I've lectured this in the diploma course, and um, I just want to ask you a few questions early before we unbox. So I hope someone's in the moment to upload these slides. So obviously these are not part of the, the, the normal slides. Um, so the purpose of the centripetal acceleration, right, um, is that we're going to find out there's a force required in order to keep a body in, um, in a circular motion. And I'll try to articulate that as best as I can. But I'll ask you a quick question, right? If you are standing over there and you're rotating that ball on a string and you, re and you release that ball, what you th and you release that string, what do you think will happen to that ball? So you have a ball, you swing it around, and then you release a string. What do you think is going to happen to the, the string in the ball? Hi, Afrika. Glad that you could join. Anyone? You know, not fall to the ground. That is not what I'm looking for. In which direction will the ball go? As you swing and release it, what happens? Okay, I'll ask another question, right? Um, let's move on. So, another question: If you would imagine having a washing machine, a washing machine, right? Um, obviously, we we fill it up with water. Um, yes, therefore, do you want to say something? Yeah, Lawrence is getting closer to fly over. Basically, it'll, it'll fly outwards. That's what I'm looking for, to fly outwards and then fall to the ground. Um, so how do you think a, a washing machine works? How do we dry the clothes? Always any idea. So obviously, you know, I'm sure we've all seen a washing machine before. We have, we have clothes in there. We put some water. Yeah, it spins. But what happens is the water, the, the clothes soak up the water. And as we spin, the washing machine 
the water flies out of the the, the um of the clothes. But can we see that as we spin, there is as we spin, there's a motion, there's a force pushing something outward. Do we agree with that? I'll give you another example while you while you absorb that. Yes, thank you. Um, another one. So let's look at um, Colin over there in the car on the right hand side. What happens if you go around a bend? You can look at both uh, both of those pictures on the right hand side there. What happens when you go on a bend? Or look at a motorcycle. As you approach a bend, what do you think happens? What happens around a bend? There's a force pushing you outwards, right? Yeah. So cool. So be before we before we get into this force is pushing us outwards, we'll be looking at a force which is keeping you inwards. And and this force or what you would define as acceleration at some point is the so-called acceleration which keeps us to a center. But I'll let me try to explain. Okay, so over here we have, and I'll try to use the motion of a in the book, they use a car, and the car is essentially going in a circular path, just like that ball, and it has a constant linear speed, right? Now, even though it has a constant linear speed or velocity, what you don't actually know is that this ball is actually accelerating. Now, I, I, I mentioned to you uh, um, what acceleration was, is that, um, and that's why it's important for you to understand the linear counterpart of this thing. So, oh, sorry about that. As we rotate, right, there are different velocity vectors um, at different points around the, the, the circle, okay? And the change in the two vectors, right, which will be, you mentioned there's V1 and there's V2, and there's a slight change in the vectors, and that will be delta V, and if you throw that over a particular time, obviously, because at different instances, the, the, the velocities will be a bit slightly different, we would find that there's an acceleration happening. And I'll go to the, the our slides. <coughs> so what it says, notice that the velocity vectors, V1 and V2, um, have the same length, right? Meaning they're the same size. But what's different is that the, the, the boy has the same speed, at the particular two positions, however, since it's a change in direction. So remember, look at the one velocity vectors going up, the other one's going inside. But because there's a change in direction, therefore we have to subtract the velocity. And, and since there's a change in direction, there's a change in velocity. Right? And so what's interesting about taking if you're plotting velocity vectors around a, a circle, for instance, and I'll show you another slide again, you'll notice that you can see there there's a difference between V1 and V2 in the direction towards the center of the circle. I don't know if you guys can see that. So if we look, if we look at V1, right? If we look at V2. If you put, you can't imagine a V3 and a V4. But what's important there is that it's all the difference in the, the velocity vector is essentially pointing towards the center of the circle, right? Um, obviously, that's a bit, please add subtitles. So, so I mean, now. Uh, is my voice that bad? Um, let's subtitle again. Let's go back. Um, let's give me a second. Uh, I guess subs. Um, below slide. All right. I'm assuming you guys can. What's all on? Yeah, can you guys hear me? Right. Um, cool. Let me just quickly get this right. Where was I on here? Right. So. So now, if a particle moves around a circle there, um, 
with the quantum velocity, the velocity vector vectors is continuously changing, right? I'm essentially from the slides, and this is changing with respect to time. And the change in velocity with respect to time basically results in acceleration, and this acceleration is called the centripetal acceleration, right? And this is essentially acceleration, which um, which is responsible for the force, which we'll touch on the next tomorrow, which um, is responsible for the the rotation of the ball. Um, in fact, what's important here is to note that that acceleration is directed radially inward of the motion. So acceleration is pointing always inwards. Very important for this thing. And it's defined by the velocity squared divided by r. So I'll quickly go to the, um, the, the other slides, which, which talk to that. Um, the ones that you know. Okay, just give me a second. So you guys can see, okay. And I'll share it with you. And by the way, center petal essentially just means center seeking. So I'm just going to just going to close this one, which is serve this purpose, and I'll open the next one. Okay, just give me a second. Let's see it shortly. Okay, cool. So the subs as well, there we go. Cool. So that's another demonstration of what I was talking about. And um, so like I said to you, all the velocities are the same, changing with time. Again, uh, uh, um, another example. And again, you can see if you look at the one velocity vector there um, at, at figure B, one is pointing downwards, one to the other side, to the eye. Um, and obviously, you always notice that the velocity vector is pointing radially inward, right? And if you do some formulations based on that, using, um, you know, your standard S equals R times theta, it's what you're familiar with, essentially, you basically find out that um, um, we end up with a centripetal acceleration, and that is essentially um, equal to V squared over R. Kind of explained this already, right? So let's use your slides. Um, another way of looking at it, and just by the way, I'm definitely going to be asking dimensional analysis of a lot of these formulas. So just make sure you're aware on how to find dimensional analysis with a lot of these formulas. So yeah, just so another approach is basically um, another way to write the the, the centripetal separation is also. Um, a subscript C equals um, the radius times the angular velocity squared, right? Um, I hope that's clear to everyone. So that's that's what that essentially is, right? Um, and what they say there, understand that physically an acceleration can occur if some force is present, right? So for example, if a car travels in a circle, or in our case, we have that ball traveling around the circle, um, the force of static friction between the tires and the ground provides a necessary centripetal force. Note that the centripetal acceleration is always directed towards the center of rotation. So this, if you times it by the mass, easily you times the acceleration by mass, we would, it, we would get a force. So that in essence is the force. And then again, here's some dimensional analysis again, proving that it is acceleration. So that's just very important to note. What's also important, is that because because we, we've been looking at a, a circular motion at a constant speed, but when an object moves in a circle, it is speeding up or slowing down, um, and that's due to the tangential component being present, right? So because it's a tangential and centripetal uh, component, which is one is pointing outwards or inwards, and one is pointing as a tangent, we have to find the total acceleration using the the, the Pythagorean theorem, obviously it's basically two vectors. Um, so that's why vectors are important. But nevertheless, we're gonna do a demonstration 
on this. So it's what's important now to understand what the centripetal acceleration is. And then obviously we will um, uh, um, um, do the force part. So let's do our first example and then onto the exercise and then we're essentially done for the day. So let me just get my textbook open and then we can move on. Oh, yes, is there any questions, guys, before I move? Any questions, guys? Yes, in Galaka. No, no, so like I wanted to ask like how to differentiate like between uh, international acceleration uh, ne, ne, ne centripetal. So you said again centripetal and tangential. Yes, sir. Fantastic question. Just give me a second. I'm sorry to get the board quickly ready. Then I'll, I'll tackle you. Just one minute. No, one minute, 10 seconds. Um, let's have a look here. Fantastic, fantastic question. Um, okay. So we're on page 200. And then I'm just obviously, so you, you, have, so you can follow your textbook. Um, so let's go over here. Cool. All right. Place that guy over there. Let me share. Okay. Um, yeah. So, seeing a lack of a good question. So, first thing is first, right? Just by looking at the form. So, I'll just park that on here for now. So we have a circle, we obviously assume it's rotating. And what the linear velocity is, is basically that there, right? And what I mean by this uh, single lacquer, so if you had a wheel moving, let's say it's rotating this way, right? Like a car moving or bicycle moving, even though the wheel is spinning at a particular angular velocity, it's also moving linear. So that is a V r times omega, which all of this will correspond to the s equals r times theta and the a equals r times alpha. So if you're looking at two particular points, you're able to find the linear acceleration due to the to how much it rotated. I hope that's clear. What the central petal is, is there's a change in velocity vectors uh, um, on the thing. And that is basically pointing inwards. And its formula is v squared over r. What is not shown to you yet is in the next part is that, um, you know, we obviously there's, there's a force to move something this way. We, we use F equals MA, that's in a linear direction um, or even that way. But wh what is the force which keeps something in, something rotating? In essence, it's basically the mass times the centripetal acceleration. And that is the force to keep something rotating. I hope that's clear. So we could view the linear force as this, Right, and I'm just going to call it the CF for now, and that is going to be basically m times v squared over r, which is m times a, which is this a over here. So this is the force for linear, and this is the force for rotation. So this force is used to make sure a, an object can move straight, and this is the force used for the object to keep on rotating. Is that explained to you clearly? 
or you need, for, you need a further explanation. You got it. You sure? Are you happy? Is it clear, everyone? What's the difference between the center petal and the angular, the angular acceleration? Okay, I assume everyone's happy. Just undo this. So here we have a race car from a speed. Um, let me just use my razor rather. Let's um and it's going from 40 meters per second to 16 five seconds of the linear part while traveling counterclockwise in a circular track of uh, 400 meters so what it essentially means is this yeah this this is the track okay and the radius over here is 400 meters and single lacquer's cars over here and just squeeze him in and it's moving this way so let's call that omega. And when the cost reaches a 50 meters per second, calculate the central petal acceleration. So remember, it's quite simple. All we have to do is, so do is A subscript C times a V squared over R and will tell us the central petal acceleration, which is obviously directed inward, right? So I'm going to call it for you here, 50 squared. The radius is 400. And can someone just give me the answer? So it all makes sense once we actually find the force in the next section, but we just focus on acceleration for now. So what is my central petal acceleration? All right, then you guys. Let's have a look. 6.25 meters per second squared. That is correct. It's the same, it's the same as a, a linear, right? Quite interesting. I'm just look at the direction where I put it. Squared. Okay, so what's next is they're asking for the angular velocity, and that's also quite simple. We know that the angular velocity is essentially omega equals velocity, um, sorry, V equals omega times R. Um, in this case, we have the, the velocity and we have the radius. So omega will simply be um, 50 divided by the radius of 400. And we can get our radians per second quite easy. Okay. So we're going to get this value here. Okay, can someone quickly give that to me?
All right, 0 0.125 radians per second. Yes, thank you, Ms. Anthony. We always want units. All right, guys, units, don't at 0 0.125. So the next part is the one to tangential um, velocity. So Singalaka, that one is pointing over there. It's, it's a tangent, right? Hence the word tangential, right? The linear one. So that's A T. Okay. I hope that makes sense. Um, so you can say VF minus VI divided by the change in time, which is essentially the one over here. The same way you would have found them. Um, it's basically using this form over here. Um, you know this one? Um, a T. So just for the first part, there is another way to find it as well. Um, but you can use this one for now, right? So it's essentially this formula over here. So what is the tangential? What is the linear velocity now? So I'm just give that to me. So that's that part there. And if you get four meters per second squared, right? Right, so that's why they gave that acceleration part. Okay, so that's AT. So the last part they're asking, calculate the total acceleration. And that's quite simple. And what they mean by that is essentially just this vector over here, right? That's the total acceleration, A. I'm just going to call it A. Um, right, and obviously, you, you, you can see it's two different vectors, and it's a right angle triangle, and therefore, we can just simply use our Pythagoras, right? And we know it's going to be A, A, R, plus A, A of T, all squared. And then we know A, R is what? Oh, sorry, a t. So a c, sorry, because it's c rather. So that's going to be six point two five squared. Plus what's an a t there? Um, that's four. And what do we get here? Quite straightforward, eh? What do we get for that? C, 7.42, okay, meters per second squared. All right, it's quite simple, eh? Is there any questions, guys? Tomorrow we'll be talking about the force responsible. Any questions? It's really straightforward. Just a new acceleration for you to play around with. Any questions? Thank you, Afika. Okay, so obviously once we always do the example, you want to try the exercise. So I'll probably do half of it, and then you guys can do the rest. Okay, just click that, move along like this, and paste this. So in this case, we have a race car, and it's uniformly slowing down. Uh, to 60 to 30 meters per second in 4.5 seconds. Obviously, that will give us our, our, our tangential acceleration. And still traversing or traveling a path of 400 meters in radius. They're asking the car's centripetal acceleration. Right? Um, and um, 
they're asking the angular velocity and they're asking the tangential acceleration and they're asking the total acceleration of this car at 40 at 40 meters per second okay i think you all can do this all right it should be straightforward So I'm going to see something quickly. So I'm assuming it's all at, um, so it's at 440 meters per second, right? So the previous one was at, what's the previous one at? Um, what's it, it 40, uh, 40 meters per second? Oh, they're saying the call reaches 50. Okay. So in this case, it's 40. Okay. That's the speed we're looking at. All I can do is just change the speed in kilometers per hour. Now that's a typical topic, topic thing I would do. Okay. Tell me if you got A. All right, Sandile Africa, Mr. Um, Munu, do you manage to get it? So for A, our AC is V squared over R. In this case, it's going to be 40 squared, right? I give you that, that speed divided by the radius of 400. And you should get an answer of 4 meters per second squared. Okay, quite easy. And they want um, our angular velocity. So we know again omega is equal to B is over R. And in this case, our velocity was 40. And we can divide it out that by 400. And you'll get 0 0.4, sorry, 0 0.1 rads per second. Okay, that's the easy part. Could we all manage that? Could we all get that, students? Fantastic. So check C and D for me.
All right. So for our tangential acceleration for linear, we just essentially take that, uh, was it 30 minus 60 in this case? And we divide it by the 4.5. And we should get an answer of 6.67, um, or rather negative in this case, right? Because it's decelerating meters per second squared. And obviously, um, the total acceleration would be, you just essentially find um, that's going to be the radial part plus the, see, the tangential part. I call it the radial part, yeah, plus the centripetal part. Okay. Okay, you guys can check that. So, guys, we at the end of our lecture, and um, I'll leave you with, this, with some homework. Like I said to you, it's all up to you to do it or not. Yes, Africa, go for it. Um, good afternoon, sir. Um, so mm. can you please show the original formula for AT? Okay, so it's it's basically your, your change of velocity over time, Afika. It's basically your V equals, I, I showed you just now, it's just like a time. That's your standard formula, man. It's not, it's not something new. Nothing is new. It's this one. Your VF equals VI plus AT. Obviously, in this case, it's negative. You got it. Same thing. You got it, Africa? Uh, thank you, sir. I think I made a mistake because I got the same answer, but then I got yeah. the, I didn't get the negative. So I was wondering which, maybe it's because of, uh, the formula, no, that's why. So. No, no, it's not that. Remember, it's slowing down from 60 to 30. So our final, in this case, is 30, and our, and our initial is 60. Is that clear? Yes, I just said 60 minus 30, and then the, the answer came out positive. Cool. Yeah, so for so for all more guys. Um, Thank you, sir. Cool. I'll say number 17 on page 128. And um, make sure you do that for yourself. I'm assuming there's no questions. And try uh, um, number 14 on page 220, number 49, All right? You can try number 49 and 50, actually. OK. Maybe 251 as well. Let's make this 451. So make sure you do this for your own benefit, eh? Right. Okay. So tomorrow we'll be on campus and we'll be embarking on the centrifugal force, which is like the sister or brother to um to what we call it. Um yeah, to the to the to the um to, to the centripetal. All right guys, thank you for joining. Hope you learned something today and I'll see you tomorrow on campus. Cheers until tomorrow. Goodbye. Talk tomorrow.